Welcome back to the Left Lane Podcast, where we talk all things MMA. We've had a few big cards recently to go over, um, and a lot of storylines as well to discuss, as well as the public questions, which I'll be going over after these topics that I've got down here for us to go over today. Um, just before we get started, you can follow me over at Left Lane MMA on Instagram. Left Lane underscore MMA is the page to follow if you want more UFC content and breakdowns. Um, but apart from that, like, subscribe, and enjoy the podcast. So, we're going to start off. UFC 293 took place just a few days ago, and we're going to recap the event. Um, obviously, the main event, we had Sean Strickland becoming the middleweight champion of the world. Um, in one of the most surprising outcomes to a title fight, I think, we've ever experienced. It was just completely shocking. Uh, in the co-main event, we had Alexander Volkov submit Kai to Ibasa with the Ezekiel Choke, the second ever fighter in UFC history to pull that off. Um, in the third fight of the card, Manel Cap had a very fun fight with Felipe Dos Santos and uh, an interesting post-fight moment uh, after the matchup. Then uh, Dustin Tarfer KO'd Austin Lane stiff um, to get revenge after that eye poke. Tyson Pedro flatlined Antron Chakali and did a cold celebration. Carlos Olberg got the submission over Darwin Jung um, after an overturned review. Um, Jack Jenkins unfortunately snapped his arm to halt the contest with Jeppe Mariscal. Uh, Jamie Malarkey got a close split decision over or a close decision over John McDessie. Uh, Nazar Kakrast and Landon Quinones had one of the better fights of the year so far, but somehow didn't win fight of the night. Um, Blood Diamond. And Charlie Radke had a pretty uneventful performance, but that post-fight interview was anything but uneventful from Charlie Radke. Uh, we had Shane Young get submitted in under a minute by Gabriel Amanda, and he's now on a four-fight loss streak, so it's not looking good for him. Uh, and then to open up the card, Kevin Gisette subbed uh, Kiefer Crosby in the first round to open up the night for CKB, but they ended up going three and three. So Gisette was one of the one of the better performances from the City Kickboxing team. Um, but that was UFC 293. It was a great card, lived up to, or lived, uh, surpassed the expectations, to be honest. Um, and the big story, obviously, coming out of it is we have a new middleweight champion, Sean Strickland. Uh, I don't know how this has happened. This is absolutely crazy. Um, Sean Strickland just beat Israel Adesanya 49 46, clearly dominated him. Won the fight, didn't grapple, outstruck Israel Adesanya for 20-ish minutes of that 25-minute contest. Um, and I'm just in shock. I think everyone is. No one can really comprehend this result. Um, but it is what it is. Sean Strickland somehow defied the odds and became the middleweight champion of the world. He holds the 185-pound strap, and the contenders are chasing him now. He's no longer a short-notice backup opponent to fill in for an Apex card. He is now the guy with the gold at the top of the mountain that everyone is chasing. Um, who does he fight next? I want to say, no immediate rematch. I'll talk about that in a bit. I want to see Trickus Duplicy versus Sean Strickland. I think that's the clear matchup to make. Um, and Because, realistically, who else is there? Like, I don't want to see Izzy rematch. That doesn't interest me at all. He just got smoked. Um, Sean Strickland versus Drickus Triple C, they both just dethroned and just got massive upset wins over two of the guys in the middleweight division that for years have just been considered unbeatable and just ran the, ran the 185-pound division. Both, both got wins over them now, so no longer Izzy and Whitaker at the top of the mountain, it's now Drickus and Sean Strickland. Who would have thought the two guys with the most unexpected styles in the division uh, are now right at the top of it. So, amazing stuff. Absolutely crazy. I love the sport. I want to talk about Sean Strickland's potential title reign, though. Like, could this guy somehow just be so much better than everyone expected and just string together a few title defenses? Because let's look at the top 15 of middleweight. And I want you guys to comment down below who do you think he beats and loses to. So, I'm going to start off. I think... He Israel Adesanya in a rematch. I think he wins. Lucas Duple C, I think he genuinely can win that fight. Robert Whitaker, really tough, very close matchup. I would favor Strickland, honestly, the way Rob looked in his last fight. Um, 
Jared Cadenier, I definitely favour Sean. Victoria, I'd favour Sean. Costa, I'd favour Strickland. Brunson, Delizzi, Hamanson, Allen, Gastelum, Amavov, Paul Craig, Chris Curtis, Andre Meniz. I would all favour Sean Strickland against. The one guy that is not on that list that could be there very soon is Hamdut Jemayev. Um, and that's the only guy that I would really go like, yeah, he probably does beat Sean. But he's opened up as a minus 400, sorry, a uh, plus 300. Israel Adesanya has opened up as a minus 400 in a potential rematch. And I am absolutely baffled by that. I don't think he wins that easily. Um, and I also think he's got a really good shot about beating, beating Drickus. He's, that defensive performance is as good as we've seen for quite a while. So I think people should be hesitant about picking against Sean now because if he can defend the grappling, he can sure as hell defend the strikes on the feet. So I really think it's he's got like just an odd, oddly difficult style to beat. And you really just need that nuclear power and precision like Pereira to set him up. But I'm not too sure that Drickus... Drickus has that brute power, but he doesn't set him up and he's got awkward and slower punches. Uh that even Robert Whittaker was able to get out of for a lot of that fight. Um, so I genuinely think we could see Sean Strickland string together a couple of defences, but not sure. Maybe that was a one-off. Maybe he's not good, and that was just a perfect performance that's never going to be repeated. But I do believe that Sean Strickland could be a potential future like reigning middleweight champion, at least a couple of defences, until he probably fights Hamza, which I do believe he would lose. Uh, but... No immediate rematch. Here's why. Israel Adesanya, uh, coming off an amazing title reign, then lost to Alex Pereira at UFC uh, 281 and got finished. And he deserved a rematch, which he got. He then KO'd Alex Pereira amazingly, highlight reel, one of the best finishes of all time, of the year at least. And he finished Alex Pereira and he won the belt back. And now he lost this fight to Sean Strickland and... He didn't get fluke KO'd. He didn't get a dodgy split decision. He got dominated and broken and mentally exhausted and just walked down. And all of his shots were just not anything. They didn't mean anything. They were all defended. They were all slipped. They were all blocked, parried, whatever you want to call it. Sean Strickland just made Izzy look like he was average on the feet. Um... So, I have no interest in seeing this ran back straight away. I think it actually takes away from the intrigue of a fight when you do the immediate rematch because you need to let it sit a little bit. You need to let the chat... Imagine Izzy goes out there. Imagine they do Sean versus Strickers, Sean wins. Izzy goes and fights Hamza, let's say. And I don't think this would happen, but for theory's sake, let's say that Izzy goes out there and sleeps Hamza. That matchup is now so intriguing. You're like, oh, maybe it was just an off night. And now you're like, he just got dominated. If you go into it straight away, the fresh memory that everyone has in their mind is just Strickland screaming at Izzy at the end of the fight, walking him down, and Izzy just refusing to throw anything. So, no immediate rematch. It doesn't intrigue me. We've got a uh, deserving number one contender, Drickus Duplessy, 100% deserves the next shot. He should not have to fight again. Um, so, yeah, make that happen. But let's talk about Israel Adesanya. Is he potentially on the way out? Um, look, he's one and two in his last three, four and three in his last seven, um, and he hasn't looked amazing recently. Like against Pereira, obviously that's different. Uh, he got that big finish, but that was due to Pereira rushing in and uh, being a bit reckless and got caught. In the first Pereira fight, he looked good, but before that. Cannoneer was very boring, not impressive performance. Whitaker, the second fight, arguably lost. Uh, Vittori, boring performance. Like, he hasn't, he has, he gets the right finishes and he gets these cost, Whitaker to win the belt. Costa after the Romero fight. Pereira after losing the belt. Like, he gets these finishes at the right time. But apart from that, we've had boring Yoel decision. Boring Jan Blachowicz fight, which he lost. Boring Vittori fight. Boring second Whitaker fight. Or well, I wouldn't say boring, but not great. Boring Cannoneer fight. And now he's just lost to Sean Strickland. I think he's on the way down. And I think historically, I think he's like 34 years of age, maybe 35. I think he's going to start to slow down. I think his timing was not there. And it's not off. It's just that he's not that good anymore. I think he's not the guy that 
KO'd Robert Whitaker in the first fight. He's not the guy that KO'd Costa and looked like a world beater. Like, Israel Adesanya, whether you like it or not, is going down the hill. I do believe that, and I do believe that he will win more fights in the future, but it's just tough. Because I don't think he beats Sean in a rematch. I definitely would not favour him to beat Hamza. And after that performance, I would definitely think Drickus would beat him as well. So I think it's tough for Izzy, and I think you could be seeing him fall down the rankings just a little bit. So I think Izzy's on the way down. But regardless, we have another card to talk about since the last time uh, that we spoke for the podcast. UFC Paris. Cyril Garn against Sergei Spivak, UFC Paris. It was a great card. Uh, Early morning MMA for me over in Australia. I had to wake up real early for that one. Uh, but let's recap that card as well. So, Steel Guard got an impressive masterclass performance. Second round's TKO over Sergei Spivak. Um, Manana Fuhr got a solid decision over Rose Nami Yunus. Bernard St. Denis looked amazing against Thiago Moises and proved to be a real force at 155, who I think can definitely be a future contender. Um, and Volkan Uzdemir stopped Bogdan Guskov in the first round. Uh, Taylor Lapalus uh, and uh, beat Kalen Lockburn. William Gomis had a weird sort of uh, result with a win over Giannis Gamori. Um, who was it? Uh, Morgan Charrier had an impressive TKO uh, win over Manolo Zaccini. Um, and a bunch of other fine fights. Angelusa against Reese McKee got the win. Um, and just a bunch of fun fights. Ferry Basharat got a really impressive win over um, Clayton Rodriguez. So, really solid uh, UFC Paris card. But let's talk about Cyril Garn and the heavyweight division. To link this in a little bit with Volkov as well, because he just won against Taito Ivasa on the weekend. Um, but Cyril Garn, really impressive performance. Didn't sh- prove everything. He looked great on the feet. We knew he would absolutely light up Spivak on the feet. Um, but he defended one takedown attempt, really. I think stats show three, but one takedown attempt was all that he really looked decent with, but it's tough for Garn. Like, what do you do? He's coming off, he's two and two in his last four. Before this, he was one and two in his last three, losing to Jones and Francis, beating Ty and now Spivak, both fat, plotty heavyweights. Um, it's just tough to know where he's at. He's now ranked number one. In the heavyweight division, it's Jones, Garn, Pavlovich, Stipe, Aspinall, Blades, Volkov, and then after that, it kind of falls off a little bit. Um, but who does Cyril Garn fight next is what I want to know. And my proposal is the winner of Curtis Blades versus Jelton Almeida, which I believe is going to be Jelton Almeida because I don't think the UFC is eager to push Garn back into another title shot. If he wins the belt, then you got Francis can shut his mouth and say, I beat this guy. He lost to John Jones already. You want a new, marketable, fresh champion that doesn't have too many losses on their record, like a Pavlovich, like an Aspinall, like a Jelton Almeida in the future, maybe. Um, but yeah, it's tough for Garn. He does look really good. But let's also talk about heavyweight division, because it, it's so tough to know what's going to happen. Because if John Jones retires after beating Stipe, the floodgates open, and then it's Aspinall versus Pavlovich for the vacant belt, and then all go from there, and then it's free reign. All the guys can just go for the title. But if Jones wins, who do they go with and doesn't retire? Because do they do Pavlovich, who deserves it, or do they do Blades? So or do they do Aspinall, who's coming off a win over March and Tabura, who doesn't? So he doesn't deserve a title shot, but he's probably the most marketable guy at heavyweight right now. Or Jones to fight. So, would be interesting. Depends. If they do Jones versus Pavlovich, then you do Aspinall versus Garn. If they do Aspinall versus Pavlovich for a vacant belt, then you do Garn versus Almeida. And then if for some reason they do Jones versus Aspinall, then you do Pavlovich versus Garn. And then you figure it out at a later date. But the heavyweight division, looking really intriguing. And even though I don't want to see Jones retire because I know that because um, I know that means we miss out on a lot of good matchups. We don't get to see him really tested because Garn and Stipe aren't the biggest tests in all areas. I want to see either Aspinall or Pavlovich. If you beat one of them, you can leave. Just go. You've proved all you need to. But if you beat Stipe, it doesn't prove much to me. I want to see something else from him. But yeah, 
Heavyweight, really interesting. I'm looking forward to seeing how that plays out. Let's talk about uh, women's flyweight. Erin Blanchfield or Manon Fiorot? Who gets the title shot at 125? Because I am leaning towards they're going to give it to Erin Blanchfield, but depends what happens this weekend. Because if Alexa Grasso wins, I do believe they do Erin Blanchfield because I think they want a more marketable name in that women's title fight picture because Valentina if she wins then they'll either do the trilogy with Grasso or they could do for Euro just because they know Valentina brings in numbers as a women's fighter but uh, if Grasso wins then I think Aaron Blanchford is a lot more marketable than Manan Fiora and so I'm like do they really like Manan Fiora versus Grasso like is that really a title fight that everyone's like really looking forward to I don't think so and even though Manon fiorot has got some really good wins, like Rose Nami Yunus, Caitlin Chikagian, I think she beat Tabitha Ricci as well. Like, she's got some great wins. More than Aaron Blanchfield in terms of resume, who's just beat, like, Molly McCann, Jessica Andrade, and now Tyler Santos. But Tyler Santos is a girl that went close with Valentina Shevchenko and arguably won. So I think that's really impressive, and I do believe that Aaron Blanchfield is better than Manon Fjord as well. So I think it's going to go to Blanchfield, but let me know in the comments who do you guys think deserves the next title shot, Aaron Blanchfield or Manon Fjord. Um, okay, UFC 294 is the next fight is the next fight card up on pay per view. Uh, so far the main card reads as follows: It's Charles Oliveira versus Islam Makhachev, Hamza Chamaya versus Paulo Costa. Johnny Walker versus Magomed Ankalaev, and then Nasadin Imavov versus Ikram Aliskarov. So, that is the four-fight main card, and the UFC 293 broadcast announced that there was one more fight to come. So, let's kind of hypothesize here. Who is going to fill that last main card spot for UFC 294? Obviously, other fights on there, Makaya versus Elliot, Shara Putin versus Silva, and a bunch of other fun fights. But... None of them really deserve a main card spot. So, what's going to fill in? I've got a few options here. We could either be seeing Shavkat Rachmanov versus someone. I would lean Gastelum, but it's so close that I doubt it. Uh, and because Gastelum pulled out of September, so I doubt they make that in October. So, but maybe Shavkat versus someone. Uh, if you're looking at Featherweight, maybe, you could see a Movzar Evluev step in there and fight. But the one that I think is going to end up happening, I believe it's going to be Anil Dayush versus Armin Sayukin. I think he's going to be the fight that gets put on that main card. They always like to have um, a fight with two guys from the same division as the title fight main event. Like That's something they just do. Like They always do that. It just happens. They did Gamera versus Dayush last year on the same card. Um, like Every card has either a backup fighter or a fighter who's already going to be fighting on the card. So, I, I would love to see it. Maybe Movzai Evelyn versus like Josh, Josh Emmett or like someone. Um, but maybe Shavka versus someone. But ultimately, I believe that it'll be... Uh, I think Armin versus Dayush makes a lot of sense. That's been rumoured for quite a while, so I think that's going to happen. Um, but there are eight divisions that don't have title fights booked right now. So what are they going to be? What are the fights going to be in each division? Let's start off with, so obviously heavyweight, we've got booked. Jones versus Stipe, UFC 295. Light heavyweight, vacant belt, nothing booked yet. It's going to be you versus uh, Alex Pereira. I think that's kind of set in stone. But when is that going to be? Do we see that in December is my question. Because I think it could be a December main event with a O'Malley maybe co-main. But I don't see anyone else main eventing for the light heavyweight title. So I think UFS Alex is the one that we're going to see there. Obviously, middleweight, Sean just won the belt. So no middleweight uh, no middleweight division booked, but I think Sean versus Drickus should be the next fight at one, uh, 185. At welterweight, Leon versus Colby is the fight, or just when? Is it going to be MSG? Because they have been pushing for that for so long. It was meant to be July. It's meant to be November. And they're somehow still not announced it yet. So I really hope that's the fight. I don't care about Bilal. Probably just contract negotiations and stuff, maybe. Um, but that should be the fight. So lightweight, obviously, Oliveira Makachev, we've got that booked. By the way, Volkanovsky. It's going to be Tapoya. That's pretty much done. 
Uh, and I think it's rumored to be early-ish next year, and maybe January or February. Originally, Volkanovski was saying, guys, I want to be back in December, but looking like that's not going to happen. As I said, with eight divisions that don't have title fights booked, uh, and Volk fought in July, there's a bunch of ones that haven't fought first. You kind of want to cycle it through, like, go from one to the other. You don't do, like, featherweight, lightweight, middleweight, featherweight again, heavyweight, lightweight, like, you just got to kind of cycle it through and get them, get, uh, you know what I mean? Like, get all those, like, progressing. So each division has consistent title fights. Um, But Volkanovski to play, I'm expecting that, like, February or January next year. Um, and to wait, O'Malley is the new champion. I believe that the next matchup is going to be Cheeto Vera. I think that's what we're looking at. And maybe December. I'd love to see December as the co-main of Yuri versus Alex. That would be sick. Uh, but I got a feeling the UFC might try and main event that on its own, which would be cool, but if that was the co-main event, that would just be such a stacked card. Uh, and then Flyweight is uh, Roy Vale versus Pantoja is the ap uh, apparent next title fight for Flyweight. Obviously, Pantoja, the new champion. Um, but yeah, that should be the next one. And then Women's Pantomweight, going to be Pena versus, uh, probably Pena versus Pennington, since Bueno Silva apparently like failed a drug test or something. Uh, and then women's strawweight should be Zhang Weili versus Yan Jianan early next year in China. I think it's gonna, what we're going to see there. For But that's crazy. Normally, at times, we've got a bunch of title fights booked, two on each card, like all of that. But only three divisions have title fights booked. We only have right now lightweight in October. We, oh, sorry, women's flyweight in September, lightweight in October, and heavyweight in November. So we need December, we need another one for November, like, we need some title fights booked, guys, but last category is just talking, let's run through what else we got to look forward to this year that's booked so far. Obviously, there's gonna be a few more arena fight nights, uh, there's rumored to be one's, uh, December 10th, I think that's gonna be an arena fight night, but what do we have so far? So, this weekend, UFC Noche, Grasso Shepenko fight night, Della Madalena vs. Holland, Rosas Jr., Kopilov, all of that. Good card. Then, Fazeev versus Gamrot, Ige versus Mitchell, pretty solid card in the Apex. Then we get a week break. Then, Grant Dawson versus Bobby Green, Fight Night Main Event. Bit odd, but that card's actually really solid as an Apex card. It's got some really fun fights on there. Uh, with like Buckley versus Morono, Gutierrez versus Jackson, Kutalaba's on there. Bunch of fights. So that's actually not too bad. Then, October 14th, we've got Barboza versus Sadiq Yusuf is a really solid fight. Yanis versus Martinez. Michelle Pereira versus Mark andre Berriolt. Uh, a few other good fights on that card too, like Arujo versus, I think it's O'Neal or someone, or Maya. Uh, so a few good fights on that card too. Um, and then obviously Abu Dhabi. Then, I assume it's a week break. And then we've got uh, UFC Sao Paulo, Almeida versus Blades. Then we got MSG, Jones versus Miocic. Then a fight night, Allen versus Paul Craig. And then a bunch of other random fight night dates with no confirmed fights. And then December pay-per-view right at the end of the year. So, got a few good fights to look forward to for the rest of the year. But definitely intrigued to see past, like, November. November onwards, what's going to get booked there for the last two months of the year. Because we haven't got much. Like, we've got for November so far. We have... Um, John Jones vs. Stipe, Jessica and Josh vs. Mackenzie Dern, Derek Brunson vs. Roman Delizzi, uh, Steve Ursig vs. David Dvorak is fun, and then I think it's like a flyweight, low-level fight as well. So, pretty in uh, pretty intriguing what's going to happen for the rest of the year with uh, those fight announcements, but let's move on to the questions. Um, the first one is, with John Jones' potential retirement and Izzy's recent loss, I feel two of the faces of the UFC are on the downturn. Although there are many great fighters, not all of them are great entertainers slash pay-per-view sellers. Which fighter do you think could, do you see becoming the face of the UFC in the next few years? So yeah, you're right. Um, all the stars, or not all of them, but the kind of apparent previous champions, they're all kind of going down. Volk is like the last one. The last one standing is Volkanovski. Um, he's the only champion that's been there since the 2010 decade. Crazy stuff for that. Um, but future stars, I think, per division, I think I'll name the biggest star, I think, in, like, the next few years. I think it's going to be Tom Aspinall. 
I think light heavyweight is going to be like a year for Husker. Uh, middleweight, I think, is going to be like Rickus and Sean. Uh, welterweight, I think, is going to be Shavka, Della, Ian, Gary, those kind of guys. I think welterweight is actually a really good division for stars, even though it's not that good right now. Lightweight, I think, is going to be like, how long Islam sticks around for, but I think like Fazeev. Uh, the guys that aren't in the top five right now, like Fazeev, Armin, those kind of guys. I think Bonar St. Denise definitely has star potential once he makes the rankings. Uh, a few other guys there too. Um, featherweight, I think the stars are going to be like Ilya Tapuria, I gotta say, is going to probably be the face of featherweight once Volkanovski leaves. Diego Lopez coming up, definitely star potential. Uh, Bantamweight, O'Malley, Song Yudong. Uh, maybe Adrian Yana's potentially, Umar Magomedov, those are the kind of stars there. And then Flyweight, you're looking at like, maybe Roy Val, uh, Manel Kak, uh, those kind of guys. Uh, uh, was it Muhammad Bakayev, Tatsuro Tyra, and then Women's, I really can't be fucked. Um, but good question to start us off. The next one, I thought going into the Strickland fight, uh, the Strickland Izzy fight, that Izzy would struggle to touch Sean's head unless he could open him up with body kicks. Mainly teams and roundhouses he could fake out for head kicks. I also feel like this would have kept Sean from walking him down as much. Why do you think Izzy didn't do this? Did he, tr did he try and Sean stopped him? I didn't realise it. Or is this something Izzy could work on moving forward? Um, so you're talking about why Strickland was able to walk down Izzy so much. It's because he effectively pressured him and he defended the shots. Like, Izzy threw shots. Izzy threw tons of leg kicks, bunch of body kicks. He threw question mark kicks, which I was worried about. Like, the question mark kick is something that everyone was saying was going to knock Sean out. Uh, and I was worried about that. But Sean just blocked everything and kept walking forward and just didn't give Izzy the space to really land the right shots that he wanted to. So it was really impressive. Um, the next one. Question, uh, why are people continuing to take away credit from Sean's win by saying Izzy was off, as if that wasn't 100% attributed to Sean? I 100% agree, couldn't agree more. I did a post about it on my Instagram, left lane underscore MMA. Um, I, I titled it, uh, Israel Adesanya didn't look off against Sean Strickland, here's why. And it's like, you just got to give credit to Strickland. He defended the shots, he walked him forward, he effectively pressured him. And these are all things that have given Izzy trouble in the past. Guy, guys that throw effective straight punches, guys that walk him down instead of like running towards him open uh, with their chin open. Like, Strickland just had an amazing game plan. Look, was Izzy 100%? Was he the best fighter ever? Probably not. Probably Strickland wasn't either. He had a terrible weight cut. So, no excuses for Izzy. Strickland was just better on that night. Um, Next one, how does Strickland stack up against the rest of the contenders? How long do you think he holds on to the belt? Uh, yeah, good question. I believe it depends in what order he cops the, the line. Because I think if Drickus is next, he can win that. If Izzy's next, I think he can win that. Maybe if they do Drickus, then Izzy. Or Izzy, then Drickus. He could get two there. But if they do Drickus, then Hamza then that's when it's dicey, or if he just loses straight away. So I think, as much as I love Sean, um, I think two defences is probably the max that we see from him. Uh, I think Hamzat's going to become a long a long reigning middleweight champion, is what I believe. Uh, the next one, how do you think the top five light heavyweights do against all ranked heavyweights? All right, so bit of a fucking, that's a bit lengthy to do, but I'll do it. Um, I'll go through it quickly. So, top five heavyweights. So, Jamal Hill. Uh, beats Nascimento, beats Dalima, beats Romanov, beats Rosenstrike, beats Tybura, beats Lewis, loses to Almeida, loses to Spivak, loses to Ty, loses to Volkov, uh, loses to Blades, Aspinall, Stipe, Pavlovich, Garn, Jones. Loses to all, pretty much, the top guys. Yuri Prohaska. What, how does he go? Okay, so... Beats Nascimento, beats Dalima, beats Romanov, probably. Beats Rosenstrike, Tybura, Lewis. Loses to Almeida. Loses to... Uh, does he lose to Spivak? Probably not. Beats Ty. I could see Yuri beating Volkov, maybe, but he's a bit too wild. I'll say loss. Loses to Blades, Aspinall. Beats Stipe right now. Loses to Pavlovich, Garn, and Jones. Um, 
Pankalaev beats Nascimento, Dalima, Romanov, Rosenstrike, Tabura, Lewis, Almeida. Oh, no. Doesn't... Or does he beat Almeida? Probably, if he can stuff takedowns, you know. I think he beats Almeida, beats Spivak, Ty. Or Volkov's close. I'll lean Volkov. Potentially beats Blades, loses to Aspinall, beats Stipe, loses to Pavlovich and Garner Jones. Uh, Alex Pereira loses to Nascimento, sorry, beats Nascimento, Dalima, Romanov, Rosenstrike, Tybura, Lewis, loses to Almeida, the grappling's too much, loses to Spivak, beats Ty, beats Volkov, loses to Blades, loses to Aspinall, beats Stipe. Oh, Pavlovich is so, he's too big. Loses to Pavlovich, loses to Gard, and loses to Jones. Uh, and then the last one, Jan Blahovic, um Beats Nascimento, Dalima, Romanov, Rosenstrike, Tabua, Lewis. Does he really get taken? I think he could lose to Almeida, probably, at heavyweight, the size. Uh, beats Spivak, Ty. Loses to Volkov, I think. Loses to Blades and Aspinall. Beats Stipe. Loses to Pavlovich, Garn, and Jones. So it's pretty similar for all of them. It's like Jones, Garn, Pavlovich, Aspinall, Blades, Volkov kind of beat all the light heavyweights. Um, Stipe can lose to a few of them, or uh, Stipe loses to most of them. And then Almeida is the guy apart from that that gives a lot of them trouble. But a lot of the heavyweights are just fat. So if you're a light heavyweight and you don't think you can win a belt at heavyweight, uh, light heavyweight, just move up and you're immediately like a top five contender. Um, the next question we've got, uh, do you think Dana White will actually listen to the fans if enough people speak up about not wanting to see the easy rematch? Well, I fucking hope so because I couldn't care less about it right now. Like, new ch when you see a new champion, you just want to see more defenses. Like, you just want to see them fight everyone. Like, that's the thing. That's why it was getting dead when Izzy was champ because fair play, he was beating people. They were boring fights, but, like, you wanted to see Drickus, Hamzat. We didn't even think about Strickland as a potential guy that could ca cause him any trouble. Um, but I think eventually cooler heads will prevail, and they'll be like, okay, come on, Izzy doesn't deserve it. Let him take time off. We don't want to hold this belt up until next year. Uh, so, yeah, I think I think it will end up being Drickus, Well, I hope so, because I don't think Dana just determines what happens at all times. Um, but if all the other matchmakers really like Izzy and want to do that again for some reason, the thing is though that's going to be so long. Like because so Strickland took no damage. He can fight December if they need him to. I know they don't. He can fight January, February, March, April. Like I don't think Izzy should be back until like March or April next year. So I do hope that Dana does listen to people and we don't have to see that again. Next one, we've got some fantasy matchups. Prime and Garnu versus Jones slash Pavlovich. I believe he loses to both. Um, I think Jones takes him down. And then I think Pavlovich is just a better striker than Garnu. Clean out. Has a really good shin as well. And just cracks. And Garnu is too open. Uh, and even though he's got a really good shin too. Oh my, that fight would be crazy. Like, that's like something out of a movie. And Garnu versus fucking... Pavlovich. Shame we're never going to see it, but I think Pavlovich will win. Next one, Prime Silver versus Strickland. Uh, obviously, Silver would win. He's more diverse. Got the grappling, too. Uh, we just need to see more from Strickland before we can uh, start making Silver comparisons. And then GSP versus Khabib at 170. Uh, I think Khabib would win, just because I do believe the sport was just so much more evolved and I just don't think GSP was in a fighting at a time where that level of grappling and that level of ground control was there. Um, next question. Who are your top five favorite current fighters? All right, I'll go one, five to one. I'll go one to five, actually. Oliveira's number one. Volkanovski, number two. Strickland, number three. Pavlovich, number four. And number five is really close. Uh... Maybe Gilbert Burns, I'll say. But I like a lot of guys like Song Yudong, I like. Um, Jelton Almeida, like Holland, Yuri, like all these kind of guys. Diego Lopez, Bernard St. Denis. Like, I lo there's a lot of guys that I like, but those are kind of my favorite. Volk, Oliveira, and Strickland are the three, and Pavlovich. They're the top four that I'm like, I would not want anyone to beat those guys. Our next question. 
How do you see a fight between Pedion and Cheeto going? I would see that going very boring for the first, like, three rounds. And it's just hard to know with PDR. Like, he could get cracked. That high guard, I'm sure Vera would set him up with something like a kick to the body. But ultimately, I think Yarn And Cheeto did look a lot better at starting faster against Munoz. Because a lot of the fights, like, he lost rounds because he starts too slow. Um, but again, PDR did the same thing against O'Malley. So, I think PDR would win. Uh, I think he's just better over five. Next one. With Volkov's dominant win, is it possible that he could break through and ride off the gatekeeper narrative? And if so, are there any other gatekeepers in that division that could possibly put it together for a legitimate title run? I never really considered Volkov the gatekeeper, to be honest. Like, he's only really lost recently to, like, Aspinall. Lost to Derek Lewis ages ago. So, I think the gatekeeper, honestly, to heavyweight is, like, it depends. Like, I always like saying there's different levels of gatekeeper. Like, there's top 15, there's top 10, there's top 5. Like, the top 5 gatekeeper is Curtis Blades, in my opinion. And the top 10 is, like, Derek Lewis. Uh, but, yeah, I think Volkov's not a gatekeeper. I think Curtis Blades is the gatekeeper. And if you're asking about if Curtis Blades can make a title run, I doubt it because he's just too stupid. And he fights every fight how he shouldn't. And then Volkov, I think, could. Like, I think Volkov, if you look at the heavyweight rankings, um, I think he would beat Blades in a rematch. I think he would lose to Aspinall, beat Stipe, lose to Pavlovich. I think Garn would be really close. I think he would probably lose, and then I think he'd lose to Jones. But Volkov can be a top-five guy. Um, next question. Since, since Sean Strickland, since the Strickland upset, what are your five personal top-five upsets of all time? Um, of personal top five upsets of all time. So, I wouldn't say in order, but like sort of GSP versus Matt Serra, Strickland versus Adesanya, Bisping versus Rockhold, Nunes versus Pena. Uh, I'm trying to think, what else? There's probably a bunch that I'm forgetting, but those kind of ones, the ones that just no one expected. In hindsight, Holm versus Ronda's not that big of an upset because Ronda's striking sucked. But I'm looking at fights that like people just didn't see a way for the other guy to win. Um... Next one. Uh, if the current champion in the division fought the GOAT of the division in their prime, who would win? Okay, so heavyweight, prime, Stipe versus Jones. I would take Jones, maybe. Are you talking about right now? Because if right now, maybe prime Stipe, to be honest. Light heavyweight, uh, fucking, well, no champion, but it doesn't matter. They're not beating Jones. Uh, middleweight, Strickland would not beat prime Anderson Silva, unfortunately. Um, Welterweight, Leon Edwards would could he be GSP, you know? Maybe. But nah, the takedowns, I think he'd lose his prime GSP. Uh, lightweight, I think Islam would actually beat Khabib. I think his striking is way better. Um, and I think he's good enough to stop the takedowns. But only those two know what would happen in the grappling. Like you could ask one of them right now, and if they're telling the truth, those two know who would win in a grappling fight in MMA. Um, Volkanovski would beat Aldo. I maintain that he is the greatest of all time, and even if you think that Aldo is, I think Volkanovski wins. Uh, O'Malley, I think, could he beat Cruz, you know? If Cruz mixes it up with the takedowns, he would win, but I think O'Malley's just such more of a refined striker right now, so I'd have to go O'Malley, and then obviously Pan Poja would lose to, uh, lose to Prime DJ. If you want to go women's, uh, we also loses to Prime Shevchenko. And then, who do people consider the strawweight goat again? Is, do they say Joanna? Or they say, like, I think Zhang Weili would win, regardless. I think this version of Zhang Weili is just so good. Uh, next question. Who do you see becoming champion in 2024, and which champions keep their belts? Uh, this is for all weight classes. So, heavyweight, I think the champion, I think... Aspinall and Pavlovich will both win the belt in 2024. I think whichever way it happens, I think they'll both hold a belt. Or maybe just one of them wins. But definitely either Aspinall or Pavlovich. Uh, light heavyweight, I think Alex Pereira beats Yuri. And then I think if he fights like Uncle Live, he will lose. Uh, but I think Pereira has some good matchups at light heavyweight. So I could see he being champ. Uh, middleweight, I think... Hamzat will win the belt in 2024. I do believe that will happen. Um, welterweight, I th Colby or Leon? Who's going to win that? If Leon wins against Colby, I think his next fight will be Bilal, and I think he'll win that. 
and then I think he'll probably fight like Shavkat. So if he fights Shavkat before the end of the year, I think he would lose. Uh, but I'll lead towards Leon maintains the belt. Uh, lightweight, I think Islam holds on to it. I really want Oliveira to beat him. Uh, if Volk goes up, could beat him, maybe. But something tells me Islam just holds on to it, unless he moves up to light, uh, to welterweight. For featherweight, Volkanovski holds the belt if he wants to. If he leaves or moves up, then Tapoya will get it. Bantamweight, I think Sanhagen could win the belt. I think you could see Corey Sanhagen, but O'Malley's the star, so the, the script was just going to allow him to win. Um, uh, and then flyweight, I believe Pantoja will hold the belt for a little bit. If Manel Pap fights for the belt before 2024, end of 2024, and Pantoja slow down a bit, then I could see Pap winning it. Um, how would Adesanya do against the top 15 of light heavyweight? Okay, so light heavyweight here, I think he would beat Jacoby, beat Manifield, beat Reyes, beat Mazakanov. Actually, he could lose to Mazakanov through the takedowns. Beat Roundtree, beat Spad, beat Ozdemir Smith. He could lose to Krylov, maybe, with the grappling. Luke beats Walker. Could lose to Rakic. Loses to Yarn, in my opinion. Loses to Pereira. Loses to Ankolaev. He is close. And then Hill's close. Just because of the size, I think. But And also because he's not looking as good now. And people are going to know how to beat him now. Um... Next one, top five most based UFC fighters of all time. Oh, geez. Okay. Well, I don't really know all time. I don't know how all the other guys used to be, but I say Chael Sonnen, uh, Sean Strickland, Manel Cap, Charles Radke, just for that post fight interview. Maybe Colby, but Colby's not too based, you know. Like, Colby's just kind of like there. Um, I don't know. There are lots and lots of based fighters, you know. But, oh, Connor. Connor was actually pretty based, you know. No fat chicks, yeah. I'm going to miss the Uh, oh, Rampage. Rampage was pretty based. Actually, Rampage was just like the Rizla, but, oh, who was based? I'm trying to think. Chael was definitely, his spin was decent, uh, but he's kind of gone soft now. Um, but yeah, lots of, uh, bring, bring back, uh, bring back racist and homophobic UFC fighters. Um, <laughs> fuck it out. Uh, who would win these past versus present matchups, both in the front? Jones vs. Carwin, obviously Jones. Garn vs. Uberim. Probably Uberim, if he could grapple. Uh, Whitaker vs. Silva, I think Silva would win. Usman vs. Hendricks, Usman would win. Tapoya vs. Mendez, Tapoya would win. Mali vs. Aldo, I think Aldo wins with the leg kicks. Uh, Gaethje vs. Be uh, Benson Henderson, I can't read. He put Bendo, it just confused me. Uh, Gaethje would win. And then Burns versus Law, like, I think Burns would win. Um, the thing is, with the guys that fought like pre UFC 200, that like ended their careers around then. I know obviously Law fought further than that, like, but the guys that like their prime was like before UFC 200, it's just a different level of like competition. They're just not as high level. They, they don't game plan as easily. They don't understand all the like all the things as much, like. So it's just different. Sean Strickland versus Leon Edwards, who would win and why? I would lean towards Sean Strickland, you know. Like, defensively, he's just so good, you know. Like, I, Leon wouldn't grapple him. If anything, Sean could mix in some grappling at 185, because I assume he... At 170, Leon at 185, Strickland. But just after that, unless I just see him look shit in his next fight and it was a one-off performance, I have to say he beats pretty much all the strikers. Like, he beats the strikers because he doesn't get hit. He doesn't get caught. He just checked all of Adesanya's kicks and, like, made him miss so much. Like, Adesanya had, like, a 30% accuracy. Leon's a guy that's notoriously accurate, so he could set him up with a head kick or something like that. But I just feel like Sean just does that to everyone, just cardios him, I don't know. Like, maybe. But if I see him just look bad against Drickus and it was a one-off performance for Izzy, then maybe I'll change my mind, but... I genuinely think Strickland is a problem for a lot of guys. Um, next one. Early thoughts on 294. Uh, what's his name? Early thoughts on 294. What are some key keys to victory for Charles and how do Hamzat's chances for a title shot look after win over Costa? Lots of interesting matchups with Izzy, Sean, Drips, and Hamzat. Yeah. 294. Super excited. It's going to be an amazing card. Uh, if all the fights go the way I want them to. 
Um, but I think Oliveira's keys to victory. He has to stay patient on the feet, make Islam strike first at times, don't run him down all the time, fight on the stand-up how he did against Benil, utilize head movement, not throw stupid shit and get caught, don't willingly go to the ground to give Islam free control time and get, get him confident. You're only going to make yourself tired from doing that. Islam can hold you in half guard as long as he wants to. So, yeah, utilize the grappling effectively. You could even shoot your own takedowns on Islam. Uh, try and get his back standing, like try and get to his back in the clinch maybe. But stay on the range. Stay on the outside. You've got a reach advantage. Make him strike first. Counter him with the cross. Use the team to push him backwards as well. Pressure him effectively, but don't run forward with your guard down because he was catching you last time. Uh, and then Hamzat, I do believe he gets a title shot with a win, unless they want to do him versus Izzy not for the belt. If they want to go just marketing and just bag it out, could just do Hamzat straight away. Next question. Uh, who do you think Brandon Moreno fights next, in your opinion? I think Brandon Moreno will fight Amir al -Bazi. I believe that's going to be the fight because I think Pantoja vs. Roy Vahl is basically confirmed. Uh, and I think Kaiko Offense is obviously going to fight Manel Cap. Uh, Figueredo, I think, is taking a bit of time. He's probably going to go up to Bantamweight, maybe. Uh, and then, yeah, Roy Vahl vs. Pantoja. I'm trying to think. Like, show me the top five. Give me the top five of Flyweight. I'm just looking that up now. I didn't prepare for this. Um, so Pantoja versus Roy Vahl, so that's number one versus four, uh, or Champ versus four. Moreno, I think, fights El Barzi, that's one versus three. Figueredo, I think, goes up, that's number two. Kai versus, uh, Cap, that's five versus ten. Nicolau, I think, should fight, like, Perez. I know this isn't even your question about flyweight in general, but Nicolau versus Perez, that's six versus seven. Schnell is fighting, uh, Steve Ersteg, that's eight versus fourteen. Tim Elliott's fighting Mikhaev, that's 9 vs 11. And then Sumadaji, uh, I don't know if he's got a fight booked. Ulan Bekov and Cody Donan. So yeah, uh, quite a bit of flyweights actually booked, you know, or soon to be. Like, Antoja, Roy Vahl's pretty much booked. Kai vs Cap's, like, not booked, as in fights that are going to happen. Kai vs Cap, like, Schnell vs uh, Urseg, uh, Cap vs, oh, Elliott vs Mikhaev. So few fights to look forward to at Flyweight, for sure. And I think Roval should main event against... Uh, sorry, Moreno should main event against Amir El Bazi. And if El Bazi wins, he gets a title shot. If Moreno wins, he fights probably once more. Probably against, like, Nicolau if he beats Perez or something. Uh, and then the last question. Let's finish on this. How do you see the top 10 of welterweight shaping up at the end of 2024? We have lots of fighters not wanting to fight each other and essentially preventing the up-and-comers from coming up the ranks. Yeah, so, welterweight. Let me go to that right now, uh, and I'll read you the current welterweight rankings. So, champion Leon Orders, Usman, Covington, Bilal, Hamdat, I'm getting him out of there because he's not fighting at wel wel welterweight again. Burn, Shavkat, Wonderboy, Jeff Neal, Brady, Luke, Gary, Magni, Holland, Della, Chiesa. And then I think guys that are going to be in the rankings, uh, Renat Fokretinov, uh, Gabriel Bonfim, I think those are two that are well wait right now that are unranked that will be in the rankings. Uh, so what did you actually say? The top 10. I think the top 10 by this time next year, or by the end of 2024, um, will look something like Usman's left. I think Covington's going to fall down a little bit. I think Hamza's going to be out of the rankings. I think Wonderboy retires. I think Neil Magny shifts off out of unranked, like goes unranked. So I think top 10. You're looking at, like, Leon, uh, Leon, Shavkat, Della, Gary, Bilal, uh, Jeff Neal, Renat, Bonfim, Holland, all that. I think that's what you kind of see for the uh, top 10. Uh, and I think guys like Kiesa will go, Magni will go, Wonderboy will go, Brady will kind of stay where he is. So I think Della, I think the top, like, thing it's going to be Della, Shavkat, Gary, Renat, Bonfim, and Leon, I think are going to be the top, like, six. Uh, I think one of those will be champion, and the other ones will be top five, in my opinion. Uh, but that, are all, those are all the questions. Um, so that's the podcast done, guys. I uh, hope you enjoy. Obviously, like, subscribe, follow, uh, 
left lane underscore MMA on Instagram for more content. Um, leave some questions in the comments on what you want to see in the next podcast, um, which will be after 294. And I will see you in the next one. Peace.